So in this next chapter, we're going to introduce NGRX Router Store. Now we haven't touched this just yet. However, what it allows us to do is bind the representation of the roots and the router state to the actual NGRX store. So this gives us much more power when it comes to composing selectors. So for instance, when we click on a particular pizza, we know that we have the number one in the URL which corresponds to the ID of this pizza. Similarly, if we click on this one, we have number two. Now, what we actually want to do is bind this router state to our application state. So we can just treat this as one source of truth, like we talked about right at the beginning of this course. Everything is a single source of truth, even the URL. Now, what we can do is introduce NGRX's router store, and it will automatically bind this state to our store for us. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to set things up. Then we're going to create a few selectors to allow us to actually select via our store the current pizza that we are on on a page. And then we're going to talk about how to refactor our selectors so we can make them a bit more neat and a bit more organized. So first thing is first, if you jump into the app folder, we're not going to use this products for now. However, what we want to do inside of here is again set up a store folder where we can manage things like our reducers and the actions and the effects. So we keep things consistent in both folders. We have the store inside of here and the store inside of here. So we want to keep our patterns the same. We keep things predictable. So we'll create a new folder and we'll call this one the reducers. Now inside of the reducers, we'll create an index.ts. And what we're also going to do in this store folder is create another index.ts. And inside of it, what we want to do is export everything from our reducers file. So at the moment, we don't have anything. It will say that the module doesn't actually exist. So we can save this out for now. And when we actually export something, so we could say export const a equals, and that will then fix this issue. So we can save that and we can undo those changes. So this is where we're going to be working for most of this video. And we want to essentially set up the state of what the router state will look like. So at this point in time, what we're going to do is say export an interface, and we're going to call this the state. So we actually initialized our store module. If you remember right at the beginning, we walk through this file and we see that we have store module for root and we just have a plain empty object. Now this means that we're initializing our root of the state of the application. However, we're not actually using any reducers. So this is a great place, our app module, where we can keep track of the router's state, which allows us to then use it in feature modules such as our products. So we can always know where we are at a point in time. So that's what we're gonna learn how to do. We're gonna say export the interface of state is going to have a property called the router reducer on it. Now the NGRX router store project requires you to actually do this. So we need to supply the word of router reducer. We need to keep that as the key on our state. Now, before we can actually bind anything, we need to import the package. So let's go and import everything from the router we'll call this. And we get that from at NGRX. And you can see that the second choice here is that router store. So now what we can say is from router dot, and this gives us the router reducer state. So what we're saying here is the router store package is essentially giving us this state representation, which means that we can actually export some new reducers. So we can say export const reducers equals a new object. And we're going to say that the router reducer from router dot. And what we actually get given here is the router reducer. So the router store package gives us all of this for free. We just simply import it and we bind it to our root reducers, which we've called the root reducers because it's going to live inside of our app module at the root of our project. It just so happens that it includes a router reducer. Now there's a few more things that we need to do to get this set up properly. One of the first things that we need to do is actually define what this router state is going to look like. So what we're going to say is export an interface and we're going to call this the router state URL. 
Now, some of this code actually lives inside the NGRX documentation for this. However, this works very nicely and this kind of gives you everything you need to get started and binding custom properties or query params or other params to our state of our NGRX store. So what we're going to actually ask for is the URL and that's going to be a string. We're also going to ask for the query params. That's going to be of type params. So what we can do is ask to import that from Angular slash router and we could just remove this because we don't actually need this piece. What I'll do is just pass that up the top so we can keep that out of the way. So we're also going to say that we have the params as well, which are going to be of type params. So we could have a query param or we could just have a normal param such as slash one in the URL. We can also ask for the entire URL, which we are essentially going to bind this to our state tree. Now the router reducer state at this point actually accepts a generic type. So we can say router state and then URL. So this is in fact typing to say that our router reducer, which we are essentially being given here, is going to actually be conforming to this object here. So we're only going to supply the URL, query params, and the params. The next thing that we're going to do is a bit more setup. So we want to actually type this reducers, which we're not doing at the moment. Now this is actually an action reducer map. So we can say import the action reducer map, and we get that from at ngrx store. So we can save that, everything's done nicely. We can then pass this to our reducers, so we can say action reducer map, and we can type that with our state. So we're passing the generic type into here because this is a state for our application. Then these two essentially are now matching up. They work in tandem, and we're just safety checking that when we add this action reducer map as the type. Much like in our other reducers, we also want to create a selector so that we can ask for this particular piece of state. So we're gonna say export const and then get the router state. So this will actually allow us to then add this get router state to another selector inside of our products folder. So we want to use the create feature selector. We can hit this and that will then be imported from NGRX store. What I'll do is just add this at the top because we've already imported something from NGRX store. So we can actually just combine these into one. And now we need to create a new feature selector. We can simply call this as a function and say router reducer. Now again, we can add some more TypeScript to this if we need to. So what we're gonna do is bump this onto a new line. Now the generic type for this, we can then say it's gonna be from router and the router reducer state which then again accepts another generic type of router state URL. So this is making sure that we've typed things correctly. We don't have to add this line, but we are just making sure that we can only tell the create feature selector that you can access some of these properties on the router reducer. So now that we've done this, what we can do is jump into our app module and we just want to register this reducer inside of here. So let's go up to the top and underneath our store and effects imports, what we're going to do is similar to what we've done in the other module where we import the reducers and we get that from forward slash store. So now when we click through, we can see that these are the reducers with the router reducer that we've just set up. So we can close that off and go back to our app module. So now that we've imported the reducers, what we can do is go down and actually add this and replace our for root with our new reducers. So we're not gonna check this in the browser yet because there's actually one more step that we need to make and that's how we take the router state. The router store package gives us the capability to do this, but we need to actually supply it a function which we call a custom serializer. So we'll do this in the next video and I'll see you there.